Hey guys, you're on A-level math and we start doing calculus. Differentiation is starting point here. Gradients of curves is the open topic that allows you to feel how to sort of transition between like the topics that you remember from GCC or probably from starting uh, A-level basics where you covered uh, different types of functions and straight to actually derivatives and differentiation process. Okay, so make sure you remember all about GCC straight lines, how to find gradients, how to find equation, how to find equation if you're given like two points uh, that the line goes through. If not, just watch the video, uh, video course for GCC. Uh, here is description, uh, here is the link in description and also there. And let's get started. So, how to find the gradient of the curve and what it is. So, as you can see here, the function fx, x cubed minus 2x plus 1, that's cubic polynomial function, and it's already built up here. So, you can build this function using GDC, just go to the graphing tool and just input equation of this uh, function. So, it can build instead of you guys automatically. So, um, as you understand the function, the function curvature, of this function is always changing. For example, that's pretty steep that it goes to some turning point where the graph actually goes down. Here is rising, here is falling, so and this again some turning point when the graph goes and uh, rise upwards back. Okay, so that's why you can say that the sort of the gradient of this curve is always changing, right? It different in different points. So if you take, for example, uh, that point, that's actually the local minimum of the function, you understand that the gradient uh, is simply um, zero because the function actually not rising, not falling. However, here, for example, for that part of the curve, you see it's pretty steep. It actually looks like a straight line. So the gradient can be set as if you put a straight line, approximate your curve with a straight line, and that's actually becomes the gradient. But let's have let's let's give definition for the gradient of the curve. So we can say that the gradient of the curve at a given point, for example, here, let's take any point A, and it has the coordinates visually, you see that it's 1.4, 1.4. And let's say y is 1, okay? So that's that's the coordinates of this point and uh, the gradient of the curve at this given point you can define as the gradient of the tangent line to that curve at this given point. So in other words, if you choose the, the line and try to make a tangent in this given point, so you see that it will define the gradient in this given point A to the curve. So that's why we can say that the gradient of the function fx at a given point, let's say A, with coordinates 1, 4, sorry, 1.4 and 1, it can be defined as the gradient of the tangent line, which you can see here as green. Okay, and how to define the gradient of tangent line? Of course, you need to know, you know that it shares one point and touching point is the only point common with the curve. So that's why tangent, you remember by definition, is the line that just touches your curve at this given point. In this case, at the point A. So that's why in order to define the, the gradient of the tangent, we need to no, just another point. Let's take, for example, this point, because right now we are going to uh, say an approximate value for the gradient. So let's take point B and let's say 2 and approximately 3. So we can say that it's around 2 and 3, okay? So it's around 2 and 3, so we, try, we can try to estimate the gradient of this tangent. In many questions, you'll be given just uh, the point and where the line goes through. 
so that's why it won't be a problem for you but right now just we try to estimate so let's estimate the gradient estimate the gradient of the line t which is tangent so this is the tangent line tangent to the curve in point or at point point in this case a okay so that's why we need to estimate the gradient and just remember if you have two points the tangent line and the gradient of this tangent line can be defined as change in y for this uh, line over change in x so change in y is simply change in or difference in y coordinates of the point so simply it's going to be 3 minus 1 right you take in y coordinates 3 and 1 and you divide it by a change in x which is 2 minus 1.4 so if you calculate that it's going to be 2 over so 0 0.6 and if you divide that so 2 over 0 0.6 you'll get around 3 and 3 recurrent decimal Okay, so that's why my estimation to the gradient is going to be actually 3.3 in the period. And that means that the gradient of the function f in the point, at the point a, with x coordinates 1, 4. So we just plug in x coordinates here of the point a. So in other words, this is at the point a is equal to 3 and 3 recurrent. And indeed, you can actually put the line in a different point, for example, here. And if you put the line here, you understand that gradient is simply 0, as I said, at the maximum point, at the local maximum, the gradient is 0, because your line is actually uh, horizontal straight line so that's why there is no change in y for the line as well no change in y for the function fx so uh, if you put for example tangent line right there for example at this point uh, that's going to be a tangent line good example yes it will go something like this uh, you know why it's intersect the graph? Remember, by definition, it should have one single point. However, uh, due to the fact that curvature is changing here, okay? So that's uh, concave down and here is concave up. So that's why curvature is changing. And that means your line can cross the graph uh, and other parts. But in this case, you obviously see that uh, this is the common point, so that's why here it's sort of tangent, sort of tangent, okay? It might cross the graph at another part, but because this is a specific point, it's called point of inflection, just going forward. But in this case, uh, your line actually cross. So, uh, how to calculate the gradient? Again, you take in the coordinates uh, 0, 1, so at this point, you take in the coordinates, so let's take point, let's name it point K, and it has 0 and 1, right? And you can estimate, for example, this point, and this point is going to be, is, is going to have coordinates uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and 0 for Y. Uh, sorry, negative, yeah, negative 0 0.4 and 0. So let's put L. So how to estimate the gradient of fx at the point 0? So you just simply need to use the gradient of that line. So let's calculate the gradient. Obviously, it's negative, right? So you take in 1 minus 0 and over negative 04 minus 0, okay? So your gradient at this given point x equals 0 will have will be 1 over negative so negative of 4 and if you calculate that 
So you'll get 2.5, so negative 2.5. And that's the gradient. So for, very, for example, if you take the, the derivative, so uh, just going forward a little bit, let's check that derivative uh, at the x equals zero is gonna be somewhere around negative 2.4. So negative three, so three x squared and minus two, okay? So when you plug x equals zero, so what I've got precise value is negative two. So derivative will give you precise value, but about derivatives as I promised a bit later. So we can, at least we can estimate, no bad estimation. <laughs> All right, so let's go to, there are some questions that you might actually meet on your exam, that sort of exam style question. And let's consider first, uh, you need to estimate the gradient of the tangent t to the curve of x at the point a with x coordinate x equals square root of two. Okay, so first of all, first of all, what I'm gonna do, um, we have x equals square root of two, but we don't know why. So what we can do, we can first calculate y. So your point a simply right now has the following coordinates. So a with the coordinate square root of two, but we don't know y of the point a. So what we can do, we can plug x square root of uh, two, x equals square root of two in the equation and calculate y. But uh, square root of two approximately is around uh, 1.4. So I bet that, let me see, 1.4. Yeah, I'll bet that that's gonna be this point A because square root of two and one, because uh, visually it's, it can be seen and square root of two is around like it's approximately 1.41, okay? So, but let's check, let's just plug the value and find y. You need to plug in, into equa in, in, inside the x into the equation of the function. So you put in x equals square root of two and try to find the value. Let's go to calculator, let's calculate square root of two cubed minus two times, okay. I'll write first square root of two cubed minus two square root of two and plus one. So use your calculator and what I've got, I've got one. So I've got one. So that's why uh, the y coordinates is going to be one. We can actually set up a point as square root of two and one. Okay. And right now, what are we going to do? We need to estimate the gradient of the tangent at this given point. So that's why we're just going back and trying to put and trying to put, you know, the tangent at this point. So it will go something like this. So let's pretend that this is the tangent. So I put T and say that this is the tangent line. At a given point. So you see that in order to find the gradient of the tangent, so we know that gradient for f at the given point square root of 2 uh, is going to be equal to the gradient of the tangent. And gradient of the tangent, just simply we're taking another point, let it be point k, and let's set up the coordinates. Um, I will bet that it's going to be 1.2 somewhere. So x is 1.2 and y is 0, right? So y coordinates is 0. So that's why gradient of that line is going to be 1 minus 0 over n square root of 2 minus 1.2. Okay. So if you calculate this gradient, you will get one over and bracket square root of two and minus, so minus 1.2. So I've got the gradient around 4.66, 4.67. So that's my gradient, okay? And right now, what we're going to do, we're going to um, estimate 
So that's our estimation. So that's why the gradient of the function is also 4.67, roughly. We need to put another point B with coordinates 1, 8 and 3, 2. So 1, 8 is here. And what about 3.2? Somewhere here. Okay. So that's point B. So point B will have the coordinates uh, 1, 8 and 3, 2. 1, 8 and 3.2 and right now what I'm going to do I'm just want to connect with the chord so calculate the gradient of the chord AB so how we can do that let's put that sort of line and let's connect those two points so I connect point A and point B with the chord so this is the chord okay Chord. In our case, this is chord AB, and we need to calculate the gradient for this. Okay, so how to calculate the gradient? Again, you have two points A and B, and just simply you need to calculate the gradient of the line segment AB. So gradient line segment AB is going to be equal. So change in Y over change in X. So you get 3.2 minus a is 1 and over 1.8 minus square root of 2. Okay, that's going to be the gradient. Sorry, minus square root of 2. Okay, now let's calculate. So, 3, uh, 2.2 simply over brackets 1.8 and minus square root of 2. So that's how you can calculate the gradient. So what I've got, I've got 5, roughly 7. Okay, that's the gradient AB. And we definitely sure that gradient AB is more than the gradient of the tangent T. Okay, gradient of the tangent T and the point when x is square root of 2. Okay. So, uh, what can be inferred about the gradient of the chord AB if point B becomes clo closer to point A? Okay, so now I'll try to show you using maybe just bolder line. And let's pretend that we have the point, the point A that the line exudes and point B, okay? So, if we try to make point B closer and closer and closer to the point A, you see that the gradient actually, the gradient becomes very, very close to the gradient of T, right? Because finally, finally, when point B in limited case reach point A, you see that the gradient and the lines, so the gradient uh, of AB, because AB segment becomes simply the tangent, right? So they have become the same with the tangent. So that's why you can state that the more closer point, the, the closer point B to point A, the obviously the more, the closer the gradient of the segment AB to the gradient of the tangent line in given point A. So that's why this is the limited case. And that will help you. Uh, this really uh, help you in your understanding, in your comprehension of actually derivatives. Because right now we're actually very close to a derivative definition that actually derivative is simply changing y or changing x or basically the gradient of the function in a given point. So that means we can state that the closer point B to A, the closer the gradient of this chord to the gradient of the tangent line. So that's outcome and that what we can write right now. So the gradient AB simply becomes closer to the gradient of tangent line at the point A, okay? And uh, you can try to calculate by taking 
any random point, so like changing the coordinates of B very, very close to A. For example, if you put this point B right there, for example, let's say, let it be your new coordinates. Okay, even if you take that, so with y equals 2 and say 1 point, one roughly it's uh, 1.6. So even if you take new position of point B with coordinates 1.6 and 2 and just plug and calculate the gradient of A, B star, so gradient of A, B star, you'll get the closest value to the gradient of the tangent, which is 4.67, okay? So I, 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 I hope that actually uh, you've got the right uh, understanding of that, and that means that you're on the right way uh, to, the understa to understanding what derivative is, okay? So make sure you're pretty strong in, in grading calculus, calculating for straight lines and that's how you can uh, be more flexible when you be trying to solve you know different exam styles questions okay so don't forget to watch all the videos about a level stuff and don't forget to visit a level zillions classes and see you tomorrow